we're back in Las Vegas. This time we're staying at the new Fountain Blue. I want to make some money. By the way, did you know that there are slot machines at the airport? What are you doing? Just can't wait five minutes? Oh my god, let's go. Let's go. We hopped in a cab all the way to the northernmost part of the strip. Et voila, le Fontaine Bleu. We entered the lobby, and what a lobby it is. This hotel is gorgeous. If you want to get more details, I'm probably going to make a full hotel review. Check for a link in the description. In the meantime, let's check in. Get our keys, head through the casino, to the elevator, down the hallway, and to our room. Wow. Nice big bed. Look at this view. Holy shit. That thing looks amazing in person. Oh my god, yeah. This is actually my first time seeing a glow like that. I am thrilled with our sphere view. By the way, video doesn't do it justice. First order of business is to head down to Chez Bon Bon, one of several cafes on property. They have beautiful selections here, but we're having dinner, so I'm sticking with coffee. Properly caffeinated, it's time to head upstairs and get ready while enjoying the sphere view. I honestly could just stare at this thing forever. Luckily, it didn't take that long. Here's Diana's fit check. We made our way out of the room, downstairs, for dinner at Poppy Steak. Woo! Poppy Steak is absolutely insane. It's more of a nightclub than a restaurant. You'll see what I mean in a minute. This place is beautiful. It's better than the one in Miami. Quick peek at the menu, and we're starting with cocktails. I mentioned the nightclub vibes here. Basically, if you order any of the thousand dollar menu items, it comes out like bottle service. We ordered Wagyu pastrami and it came with a lesser presentation. Still cool though, and it was absolutely delicious. We switched to a bottle of wine to go with our steaks, which were accompanied with classic sides. Honestly, everything was superb. I was surprised once again for dessert, only this time it actually is my birthday. This cheesecake, by the way, was transcendent. Poppy steak, 10 out of 10. After dinner, it was time to try my birthday luck. We head to the casino, played some table games, couldn't shoot any of that, obviously, so I decided to do some slot machines. Here I am seeking out the lucky slot. Who's the lucky slot tonight? Oh, Cameron Diaz. The machines were more or less fruitless, but I did win some chips at the tables. We're up, and that's a good place to stop. Decided to head over to this central bar called Blue Bar, and it's absolutely beautiful. We're gonna have a little nightcap. It is my birthday. We're here at the Blue Bar. Let's see what the offerings are. There were a lot of fantastic cocktails to choose from. Dana was boring and got wine. I had this amazing apple based drink. That tastes like apple juice. <laughs> this was a fabulous bar to people watch and relax. As it got later, Diana's feet started to hurt. Luckily, the hotel gave her slippers. Happy feet. I got those happy feet. <laughs> On that note, we'll end day one. Good morning. It's day two in Viva Las Vegas. That's right. Speaking of Viva Las Vegas, we did some gambling last night and we're up. So <laughs> off to a good start. Let's keep the momentum. But first things first, let's get some room service. Yeah, let's get some room service. Room service comes as it should on a white tablecloth, and he sets it up for you. Starting our day with coffee. Diana had avocado toast. I chose this breakfast sandwich. Mm. And both items were so good. Properly fueled for the day, we head outside. We're heading south on the strip along Fountain Blue's property, and we noticed this car sculpture. Anyway, neat. We continued, and I was brainstorming for some future video ideas. Maybe we should stay there once. <laughs> Just kidding. Now the wind, that's more our speed. We love this hotel. It's definitely one of the nicest on the Strip. You may be wondering why we're here. Well, I had some wind comp dollars, and we wanted hats. Also, I need to gamble a little to remind them that we exist, uh, because I haven't been comped in a while, and they used to comp me here all the time. So, Give yeah. me an excuse to come back. We're here. <laughs> So this is how you turn $500 into $1,000. Follow me. First things first, load up a blackjack machine and play a hand. Hit 21 and immediately win $400. Step one complete, we're up to 700. Step two, put your voucher in a roulette machine. Task complete, we're up over 1,000. I got a little greedy and I wanted to double or nothing. 
So, how do you turn $500 into $1,000? You don't. <laughs> oh well. Here's a shot to indicate the passage of time as we get ready. And for tonight's fit check... We thought we'd do something original and wear black. <laughs> You know what? I'm really not happy with that loss earlier. I think we should head back to the casino and quickly win that $500 back. Yeah, there, that's better. Anyway, onward to dinner. Tonight's dinner is at Komodo, Fountain Blue's upscale Southeast Asian restaurant. These interiors are beautiful. We found our seat and started with drinks. Here's mine. Pikachu. Quickly onto the apps, here's a chicken Dan Dan dumpling. Friendly reminder, remember to blow on your food. These dumplings were amazing. For our entrees, we had this halibut and this truffle noodle dish. This was delicious, very truffly, and that's a good thing. I think it's fair to say it's my birthday all weekend, and here I am wishing I go viral. <sighs> Next stop, Nowhere Bar. This is on property as well. It's a great venue to see some live jazz. Tonight, we were treated to the vibraphone, courtesy of Jason the Mallet Man, who, as it turns out, is just as talented with a whistle. And here's the part of the video that has a celebrity cameo. All right, we're at Azul for one last order of business. Nightcap. This is a beautiful bar on property at Fountain Blue. Love the decor here. Here's my cocktail, and here's what it was made of. I think you should go ahead and write this down, because... That might be the best cocktail I've ever had in my life. Here's Diana's boring glass of wine again. It does the job, though. The next morning, we stop by Cafe Kuto which is a beautiful little coffee shop here on property. They have breakfast sandwiches, pastries. It kind of had a very Palm Beach feel to it, to be honest. Anyway, I settled on having a chai tea latte. And here are the other selections we made. That's really good. It's a berry macaroon sandwich. All right, all right, stop. We can't just keep eating like this. Let's go to the gym. The Fountain Blues Gym is extremely well equipped. If you're a fitness oriented person, you'll be really happy with the facilities here. But you know what I think? Working out sucks. Let's relax. Ah, that's better. We decided to visit the Fountain Blues Spa because we deserve it. Breathe that in. It smells like relaxation. The Fountain Blues Sauna is incredible. We couldn't film it, but there's a performance that involves a light show and a dancer wafting essential oils around with towels. There are other unique features to the spa as well. They've got these uh, zero gravity chairs, which is just great for your back. I call this shot Dude in Repose. There's this massive jacuzzi in the center of this place, which we thoroughly enjoyed. And other experiences I enjoyed less. I look like Jack Nicholson in The Shining. It's dinner time, we're heading to Mother Wolf. We should actually have one in LA. I haven't been there yet, so first time ever. It's my first time too, and we were not disappointed. This is nice. Mother Wolf is a beautiful, warm, contemporary luxury restaurant with great decor. I love these tiles. Once seated, we checked out the menu, but before we could decide anything, they actually brought us... Complimentary sparkling wine to start the evening. They're winning us over. Cheers. <laughs> we moved on to our cocktails, which were fantastic. Naturally, after a spa afternoon, we eat salad. YouTube says you should be more informative in your videos. So, this salad is made of lettuce. Undoing our healthy intentions, we had the spicy salami pizza which was definitely more my tempo. This pizza was absolutely fantastic. It's got some real heat to it, I love it. 
I don't think one carby dish is enough. This pasta is fantastic. It's a mezzo rigatoni with just perfectly cooked, amazing mouthfeel. Very baked meat. We followed this up with this gorgeous lamb chop. Look at that grease glisten. Mother Wolf is an excellent restaurant. And no birthday tonight. Just a cappuccino to keep my energy up because I'm getting tired of seeing this thing from afar. I want to see it up close. Located in the Venetian is the entrance to the sphere. Now you do get a sense that you're about to embark on an epic journey. Largely because it's a 15 fucking mile walk. 14 miles, come on. <laughs> Luckily, there are way markers. Every time you feel like you might be getting close, you end up rounding a corner and realizing there's further to go. This voyage could be expedited by using this moving walkway. Unfortunately, today it's not working. After what seems like forever, we do finally get there and join this massive crowd. Inside, this place is awesome and very futuristic in its aesthetics. There are many concessions and bars throughout, so the wait's not too bad. We ordered ourselves vodka soda because after that dinner, we're a bit dying conscious. To get to our seats, it's a long ride up several escalators. You really do get a sense of the scale of this place. But nothing prepares you for this. We sat basically middle-middle, and I think that's the best seat you could have here. The sense of immersion in this digital dome is insane. Oh my god. The floor section would be a good choice too. Personally, I'm not a fan of standing at concerts, but this does look like a lot of fun. The DJ gets the place warmed up, and we're ready for a show. I'm obviously not going to use U2's music, but they put on an excellent performance. The real highlight here is the stage and the visuals. Everything was absolutely spellbinding. And as a venue, you can really see the value for the artist. They don't physically have to bring any set pieces and they get this amazing production value. There were just so many breathtaking moments, including this one where it seemed like the dome disappeared to reveal Las Vegas beyond, and this one where my soul literally left my body. This really was a spectacular venue, and I can't wait to go back. Back at the Fountain Blue, we're gonna go check out Liv. Yeah. And party. <laughs> Liv is a giant nightclub in Las Vegas. What else is there to say? They had dancers, bottle service, lasers, giant CO2 canisters. Then I remembered why we came here in the first place. With a decent buzz going, it was time to find a lucky slot. Scoured the casino before this chair called to me. These cash machines are a lot of fun. They always tease you with these near misses. <laughs> Nothing was happening for us, I even got tired of shooting, so I stopped. Until we finally hit this bonus spin feature and I grabbed the camera again. Anything but 40. Now, movies always have me believe you'd win a house or a car. This is more of a mortgage payment or maybe a used Prius, but I'm not going to complain because this is a fantastic way to end night three. Last morning in Vegas, we decided to go somewhere very special for brunch. We're at my favorite diner in the world called the Pepper Mill. It looks like it's about an hour, hour and a half wait though. Luckily, there's an awesome place to wait inside. This is the Fireside Lounge, so named for this fire pit. This place is awesome. It's basically a vaporwave dream, and they make great drinks. A double Tito's um, Spicy Bloody Mary. Two of those, please. I can't think of any better way of killing a wait time. It's not too long till our name is called and we're led to our table. This is a fantastic place for breakfast. This menu is full of breakfast classics, but first things first. If you're a fan of cheap diner coffee, which I am, this is among the best. 
I had this ambrosia French toast, which is one of my favorite French toasts anywhere. Diana was more in a lunch mood and had this sourdough burger. Very good. It's time we head back to the hotel. The Pepper Mill is an iconic Las Vegas place, and you should definitely check it out next time you're there. We just finished checking out. Heading to the casino, probably shouldn't be pushing our luck considering the jackpot last night. Yeah, but a tradition is a tradition, yeah. so we should. Yeah. <laughs> she makes a good point. All right, it's our last day. I'm gonna go double or nothing here at the high limit tables. Take all these chips that I got from all weekend long. Let's see if this works. Now you could accuse me of being heavily biased, but I loved it. Definitely one of the better hotels in Las Vegas right now. All right, you know the deal. Let's break it down. The flight out here cost eight hundred and twenty dollars and forty cents. The room, which included the nightly rate, room charges, and a resort fee, came out to be one thousand eight hundred seventy-six dollars and seventy cents. Transportation to and from the airport and a cab around the strip came out around one hundred twenty dollars. Dinner at Poppy Steak was eight hundred seventy-three dollars and twenty-one cents. Dinner at Komodo was two hundred fifty-five dollars and sixty-seven cents. Cafe Kuto in the morning was forty-one dollars and eight cents. Dinner at Mother Wolf two hundred ninety-six dollars and one cent. The U2 concert at the Sphere was $1,916.84. The brunch at the Pepper Mill was $243.62. My gambling budget, as always, was $1,000, and I came out ahead of $15,058 for a net gain of $8,614.60. Until next time. <laughs> Sometimes it pays to visit Las Vegas.